Come on along and spend the afternoon in Nini's kitchen. Well, hello friends. I am working on some challah bread and I didn't think about bringing you along when I mixed it up. But here's my dough. It's the fresh milled wheat that I do. Um, so I thought I'd bring you along as I get ready to divide it up and braid it. This is going to be two loaves. Get my scale on. We're going to divide it up. It's a soft dough. We're going to oil our surface. Keeps it from sticking. Y'all like my little oil container? My brother got it for me off Amazon. But it sprays like that and then you can open it and it'll pour. But I really like the spray. I have one from Pampered Chef and you have to pump it up and then it sprays like that and it makes my hands hurt. So anyway, we're going to divide this in half. Let's see what we got. 1.11. 1.11. Oh, I'm good. Then we're going to set that one aside. Cover it back up so it doesn't dry out. Now this is uh, usually a mix. I do a mix of um, hard wheat. Um, I've been using hard red here lately, but hard wheat and um, kamut. And I'm out of kamut, so this is only hard red today. So it's not quite as soft. Let's see, 13. What was this one? 14. We'll just take a little smidge. See if that even did a difference. 13, 6. It don't have to be exact, but you know. You know me. Okay, now we're going to divide this one. We're going to divide it into four pieces. Okay, there's two of the four. Now let's divide this one. 6.4. So, oh, that's a big difference. 6, 9, 7. Good enough. Okay, we're going to move the scale over. And we're going to take and we're going to shape this into some logs. to shape it into logs then we're going to move it over here and let it sit for a few minutes and then we're going to roll it some more and so I'm out of the kamut today so it's just the uh, just the hard red um, it's still pretty soft though but I don't think it's quite as soft as it's been being, it's kind of like, it ends up kind of like a brioche bread. So this might be a little heavier than what it's been being. Um, so we'll see how it turns out. We're just gonna shape it into logs. Let it rest a minute. We're going to spray this little bit of oil on it and while that one rests I'm going to go ahead and divide the other one. Then we're going to start back rolling these. rolled about the same size I 
Maybe I'll try the rolled bread. I mean, I've braided bread before. I haven't strayed. Oh, that one needs to be a little bit longer. I haven't strayed too far into decorating bread. I don't know, not decorating it, but anyway, this is this was a new adventure. Well, I tried this one, but it was one of those things that I had seen one. Look, I put an air pocket in the middle. I had seen one, and G. Paul saw one, and we both were thinking about it. He's like, hey, have you yeah, seen this? Yeah. It was two different videos, but we saw the same thing around the same time. So I was like, hey, we'll give it a try. Turned out pretty good. It sold pretty good. But you know, we're doing those markets now, so I'm trying to find different things that will sell. Oh, I feel some air in that one, too. Maybe that's a good sign. So, we're going to lay them. We're gonna start over here. Can't lay it straight because I'll braid right off the table. Kind of push the end together because at the end we're gonna fold that under, so it don't matter. Okay, let's see. See if I remember how this goes. I better get my paper. Because <laughs> once I get started, I'm good, but getting started out. Let's see, where's my braiding instructions? Okay, shaping the four bread, four strand bread. Take the outer left and bring it to the center. It's getting started that messes me up. Then take the outer right, and this will go all the way to the left. Okay, now the new outer right strand, take it to the middle. I'll move that one over. You're left with one strand you've not moved yet. And that goes all the way out there. Now I can get my thing going. This is gonna go to the middle, and that's gonna go out there. This is gonna go to the middle, and that one's gonna go out there. This one's gonna go to the middle, and that one's going over there. This one's gonna go to the middle, and this one's gonna go out there. This one's gonna go to the middle. We're gonna put that one out there. This one will go to the middle and that one will go out there. This one will go to the middle. Then we're gonna kinda just take and tuck them under. I'm gonna kinda turn this one a little bit till it looks a little more braided. And then I have sheet pans here with parchment paper. And we're going to lay that right there. And I'm going to set it over here for right this minute. It's after we braid it, we're going to do an egg wash on it. I'm going to show you the next step. We're going to wipe this so I don't get all this oil on the bottom of my pans. Because then that just makes a mess. Okay, here's the first one. Here's the second one. I'll pick it up and lay it on the pan. So, see they turn out pretty and when they swell up, I mean they'll be big, wide, fat loaves. And then here I just have an egg beat up with just a touch of water. And we're gonna go all over, make sure you get all of it real good. My lighting's kind of bad over here. I need to get me a overhead light. We're still in the process of getting this house arranged. You know, we uh, for those that don't know, we took care of my father-in-law. This is his house. We took care of him the last couple of years. He was alive and we moved from next door in our double wide into his house and then uh, my husband inherited um, the house. So we're still in the process of moving daddy's stuff out, getting our stuff in, 
and then getting things set up. I went from a real big kitchen over there to a smaller kitchen here. So we're in the process of doing some remodeling and getting things settled. So now we need to let these rise. Once they rise, like I said, they'll, they'll get real wide and big. Once we get these, uh, let these rise, then we'll come back and we'll do the egg wash again. And then I do sesame seeds on it. You could do um, whatever you wanted. You could make it, uh, you know, like cinnamon sugar. You could do a sweet one or you could do um, herbs or just whatever you want. But first one I saw had the sesame seeds on it and I like sesame seeds. So here we go. I'm just going to cover these with some plastic wrap and let them sit. And we'll come back when... Um, when we're ready to do the next step. Okay, friends, here's another project we're working on today. I'm canning some dry beans. This is my big, uh, oh, I don't remember what size it is, uh, canner. I can double stack pints in it, though. It's not big enough to double stack quarts, but it will double stack pints. So I'm gonna double stack some beans. I'm doing baby llamas and black beans and then I had enough room for two more jars, so I did some pintos, but I'm going to do some pinto beans in quart jars. We eat more of those at a time. Not everybody eats black beans or baby llamas here, so I've been doing some pints just for me. But I'm getting my canner ready. I have my rack in the bottom, and over here on the side, I doubt you can see them because I have trouble seeing them anyway, but there's some markings, and down here... Down low is where I need to fill with water when I'm going to pressure can. And I think it's, I don't know, two or three quarts of water. This is a gallon pitcher I'm pouring out of. A little bit more. But uh, the way I do these dry beans now is not the way the USDA is approved. Uh, I don't do many rebel, much rebel canning. I don't do much not by the books, but this is one of the things that I do that's not quite by the book. The, uh, the way they say to do it, I'm gonna get this heating. The way they say to do it is you soak them overnight, drain them, um, you drain them and then you put fresh water and you boil them for 30 minutes and then you um, put your beans in your jars. I don't do it that way. I, uh, I know you're not really looking at anything, sorry. Um, I don't pre-cook mine and I'll show you why. I put for pints I put a half a cup of beans in a pint jar and a cup in a quart jar. Um, my little strainer is broke that I usually do this with. I usually have a little wire mesh strainer that I use to do this, but I'll use my <laughs> sprouting lid. But what I do is I put a half a cup of beans in each jar. I leave them overnight let them soak and it's actually been uh probably about 22 hours but i wash them good i go ahead and put them in the jar and i wash them good and then i take this let me turn you around to the sink look i got clean dishes everywhere and two dirty bottles you can handle that but i uh i drain them I rinse them, do that a couple times, and I'm going to set them back on that sheet pan, and once I get them all drained and washed, I'm going to go back with hot water, and to these I'm going to add uh, some salt and some onion and, and bell peppers that I have cut up. 
and just to, just to give them some more flavor. But I'm going to do that. I'm going to get all these rinsed and I'll bring you back. But like I said, my method, what I do is not an approved method, but I've tried doing it with the, the 30 minute cook after you soak them overnight and they uh, they just fall apart. So you end up with bean mush. And I like some texture on my beans. Now I have tried, I saw several ladies do straight dry beans, go straight in the canner, don't soak them at all, don't cook them. I don't like that either because I end up with a bean brick. So for me, and you have to use your judgment for this because I think there are guidelines in place to, pr to, to protect us, but sometimes I think it's too much. So it's a matter of what you're willing to risk for your family. Um, if it was something I thought that was totally would hurt my family, there's no way I would be doing it that way. But with the way I do them, they're tender, they're cooked through, they're not mush, they have some texture to them. So that's the way I do mine that way. But you do your own research, you do what you're comfortable doing, and you make your decisions. But anyway, I will bring you back when I get all these drained and rinsed again. Okay, guys, I think I have everything rounded up. Hopefully, you can see everything. I have my beans that I've drained and washed. I have some bell peppers that we grew in the garden, onions that I chopped, some garlic. I heard that called that the other day. Um, and I have my salt. And I'm going to do a couple of these and show you what I do so you can see. But they do, they do not say you have to put your lids in hot water anymore, but I've always done it. It makes me feel better. Like I said, do you? So, each one of these pints, I'm going to put a half a teaspoon of salt. And you don't have to have the salt. It's not to preserve it. It's just for flavor. But one thing about pressure canning... It intensifies the flavor, and to me, they are so good, but I like salt anyway. I used to salt everything before I ever even tasted it on my plate. I'm not that bad now, but I still, certain things need salt. Beans, potatoes, eggs, you get it. Um, but anyway, we're going to try to get these done getting later. I'm trying to get some bread baked. I've got somebody coming to pick up. So there's the salt. Then I'm going to get another spoon just to, so I don't have to touch the garlic and stuff. Let's just get spoons for all of it. How's that? I don't want to get this garlic on my hands though. We're just going to use a little bit in each one. Because, like I said, with the cannon, it intensifies. We can always add to it after, um, when we open the jars to use them. You can always add stuff then. But I like to add a little bit just to give, oh, I think that one got two. That one will be a strong one. Maybe I need to try to get some of that out. Some of it runs together on me and I get to talking too. So, but anyway, I like garlic. I like onions and peppers. I usually put it in any of my beans I cook. Uh, if I knew for sure what I was going to be doing with it or who was going to be eating it, I would probably add some jalapenos, especially to the black beans. But I'm not real sure what all they'll be used for. Um... Sometimes I do um, refried black beans with them. Sometimes I just add them to taco salad or I'll do um, 
you know, casseroles with uh, black beans and corn and taco meat and either chips or tortillas. I might just eat them by themselves. Sometimes I just want the black beans. Not everybody here likes the black beans. That's why I do um, the pints of those and the baby llamas. So let me get the onions and peppers in there and I'll be back. Okay guys, I have a little bowl here with some vinegar that I'll use to wipe my wipe my rims with in a minute. But I wanted to show you that and then I put a splash of vinegar in the canner. That way um, your jars aren't cloudy. Makes it easier to clean up later on. I have onions and peppers and garlic and salt in there. Um, and now I am fixing to, I will fill them with water you're supposed to do hot jars, hot food, hot water. Um, this is one time I don't. But we'll do these three and I'll show you. Because once we get the water in there, you want one, one inch headspace, which is right under this rim. But we've got a deep bubble. We're going to stir it up. This is just a wooden chopstick I got when we went and eat Chinese food. Angel always wants to bring some home with her. So we're going to stir them up. Oh, look, my oven's hot. Of course it is. We're going to stir them up, make sure there's no air bubbles. Then we're going to take a paper towel. We're going to dip it in the vinegar. Some people use a rag. I just use a paper towel. Then if it gets dirty, I just throw it away and get another one. But I use vinegar, vinegar um, when I do... Um, Anything with, uh, especially meat, anything that's going to be oily. And so I've just made it a practice to do everything with it. And put a lid on them. Then I have rings here. Just finger tight. You don't want to crank on it. And then, there's a lot of controversy about these tongs. When I first started getting them, I held them this way because I thought, oh, the cushion should be for me, not the jar. But that's to help grip the jar. And we're just going to take these. And like I said, I can double stack these, and I'll show you once I start stacking them. But we're just going to start setting these in the canner. As we fill them to keep them warm. And I'll bring you back when I'm through and I've started getting on the second row. Okay, friends, here we are running between projects again. We're back to the bread. I've started coating this one with egg wash. We just want to make sure we get all of the nooks and crannies good so it all cooks evenly. It Usually it spreads out more. But this time it went higher. So we'll see what the final bake does because even in the oven, it's going to rise more. So you always want to get it in before uh, what you think it should be as the final product because it will um, continue to rise in the oven. My little end looks like it wants to come out. Now, I said I like sesame seeds, so we put sesame seeds on it. I really think I need to do a cinnamon sugar one one day, because I like cinnamon sugar. And this bread is a little sweet. It has some honey in it. It's not super sweet. I really kind of thought it would uh, be sweeter than it is. But like I said, it's kind of got like a brioche texture, and it gets all nice and golden brown, and I think they're so pretty when they're through. But we're going to get this in the oven. I have a lady waiting to come pick it up, and I'll show you the finished product. 
Okay, here we're back. Let's see if I can get you over here where you can see. Oops, there went my tongs. But here's the pot. Here's the second rack. It looks just like the first one. We're going to put them over those jars. Try to do this. Oh, one-handed. All right. Don't look at my dirty house. Then we're going to start stacking again. Same way. One in the middle and the rest around. This spinner hood is a little low in here. Maybe we remodel. But like I said, um, this is the way I do mine. Okay, here we go. This is full. This is how it looks full. Like I said, I can do pints. I cannot do quarts. We're going to get the lid. Let's see if I can do this one handed. See my whole kitchen over here. You're going to match up the, match up the arrows. It's easier when I'm not trying to do it one handed. Here we go. Let's see if we can set it that way. All right. Whoop. See, I'm matching up. There's an arrow here and the arrow there. And then we're going to slide it closed. I'm going to turn up the burner some. And we're going to wait for, see if I can straighten that. We're going to wait for steam to start coming out here. And once it comes, starts coming out, we're going to set a timer for 10 minutes. Let it vent for 10 minutes and then we'll place the weight on there. And then we want it to come up to, I don't know if you can see the gauge. Um, when you use a gauge, it's 11 pounds of pressure for my altitude or it's like four to six jiggles per minute. I've never gotten it that low, I don't think. But you don't want it to really go too high because too high of a pressure is just as bad as not high enough. Once we start the timer, and pints do 75 minutes, quarts do 90 minutes. The same Beans are the same temperature as meat not temperature, same time as meat. Um, once you start that timer, when it gets up to pressure, if anything happens and it goes below that pressure, you have to totally start over again. You start your whole timer over. So you want to make sure that it stays up above the at the 11 pounds or right above it, or you have to start over. So once it starts steaming, I'll show you that. Well, we're going to try this. I keep losing battery and I figured out I could plug the whole camera up. We're going to see how this works. Anyway, I'm just rinsing these, giving them another rinse and filling them full of water. We're going to let them soak overnight and I'll can them up tomorrow. I'll, uh, I'll add a teaspoon of salt per quart and I'll add some garlic and some onions and peppers to them like I did the, the pint jars. Um, doesn't seem like much beans in there now, but boy, you know, pinto beans swell up big time and I'd rather have some juice in there than it to be swelled up and I call them a bean brick. For it to be swelled up and uh, you not be able to get the beans out and I had no juice. So that's just the way I do. Like I said before with the pints, this is not an approved USDA method. The approved method is you soak them overnight, drain them, add fresh water, cook them 30 minutes, and then uh, then you can them but I don't do that 30 minute cook because I don't like my beans turn into mush so I don't I don't do that cook I do the overnight soak tomorrow I'll drain them and rinse them again and then I'll add the vegetables that I was talking about 
and um, salt and then I'll add hot water and then we'll can them and quarts can for 90 minutes pints can for 75 so that's all I'm doing with these for tonight all right friends we're gonna uh, see how many pinto beans I have left I don't think I'm gonna have enough to do the seven quarts that I want to but for the quarts I do oh there's a rock right on top um for the quarts I do a cup it's two three four five they don't have to be full cups Six. Oh look, I think we're gonna have it. Yeah, we're gonna say that seven might be a little bit more, might be a little bit less, but we're gonna we're gonna run with it. Oh, I wish I could smell this bread. It's fixing to come out of the oven, and I'll show you. So we're gonna give these a good rinse. kind of peek through them while I'm rinsing and I'll peek through as I'm throwing them in the jar. My mama used to sit down and boy she picked them just bean by bean. I don't do that. I ain't killed nobody yet. <laughs> anyway we're going to rinse these good then I'll bring you back and show you putting them in the jar and I give them another good rinse once I get them in the jar. Then we'll let them soak for overnight and we'll can these up tomorrow. So we'll see you in a few. Alright, here comes the bread. Do y'all have old wore out pot holders? I do. I need to get me some more, make some more something. So here's the bread. There's one. There's the other. Aren't they pretty? Oop, don't you fall off of there. Let's check its temperature real quick. You want bread to get up to around 190 or so. If these aren't there, they should be really close. But I think these are so pretty. But yeah, usually they've been spreading out wide, but these, these roast tall. So that's interesting. Let's see, we're up to 182 and still climbing, 183, 184. We're gonna make it there. Yep. All right, we're going to move them over here and let them cool. Thanks for following me on this journey today. Okay, it is steaming. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if I can see it. Okay, let's see if y'all can see the steam. You can barely see it. I put my hand behind it. I don't know if you can see it or not. Maybe if I change directions. You can see it. Anyway, we're going to set a timer and let it steam for 10 minutes. Then we'll put the weight on. And then once it comes up to pressure, we'll cook it 75 minutes and I'll bring you back later. All right, the timer's gone off. We're going to set the weight on there. And we're going to wait for it to start jiggling. I don't think it'll take too long because usually this doesn't pop up until the weight's on, but it's already up. So the pressure's building good. We'll see how it goes. There's the gauge. It hasn't moved yet, but we'll see what happens. Thank you for choosing PRP Farms and Y'all come on back now, you hear?